It is the Anfield Wrap. I'm Neil Atkinson. With me, I've got Damien Cavana, Jamie Carragher and Gareth Roberts. Uh, we're going to cover the first friendly against Athletic Bilbao, uh, the season to come for Liverpool, and the first three games sort of mini-challenge that Liverpool get there, Norwich away, Burnley home, Chelsea home. We're also going to have a bit of a chat about offloading players in this current climate where all of a sudden this weekend and the stuff around Messi and Barcelona has made it crystal clear every single big team in Europe is looking to do the same thing. But... The first thing we got, Damien, was we got back into a full Anfield and felt brilliant. It really did mm. feel brilliant. And, you know, we'll, we'll get into the performances and all of that in a minute or two. But for me, the first thing was, you know, just being back in full grounds and everything that means. Oh, yeah. Just to be amongst friends, doing what you love doing the most uh, after you've done your work and you've enjoyed your time with your family. It's, you know every other Saturday on your half day off, that's what you live for, isn't it, as a football fan? Yeah. And seeing people smiling and being together and just, you know, I, I'm not overly, a, um, I don't go to all the pre-season friendlies that Liverpool get, get involved with, it's never been my thing, you're always busy, you know, I'm not busy during the regular season, it's sort of like, a, you know, I feel like it's a bit of an indulgence, um, but I couldn't wait to be there yesterday. Yeah. And it was just a great atmosphere, people just really pleased to see each other. And um, what more could we ask for, you know, just um, other than, well, obviously the injury will go on about and things like that. But yeah, it was just lovely to be back and uh, seeing people a bit more confident than I thought they might be. You know, with, with the whole, you know, the reasons about the pandemic and your safety and how you're looking about things. I think people were very respectful and mild-mannered. It was just a lovely, lovely occasion, a lovely afternoon out. We'll get on to the problems getting in a minute or two, Gareth, and also into the performances. But I do want to sort of take that that moment of taking stock. You know, you, you were able to get in uh, as I was when there was very limited attendance around the sort of December time of the pandemic. Yeah. This was something completely different. I thought in every single way, really, again, what Damien says about people understanding the rules of engagement. There wasn't a lot of crowd in where I was in the main stand when I was inside. And But the other side of that was surrounded by young people having a fantastic time, yeah. just loving the football, loving being there and loving being part of it. And, and, and it rubbed off on me, it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, it was, for me, it was my it was the first the first normal weekend in in what nearly eighteen months. I went to went to a gig on Friday, saw my head, and that was normal. You know what I mean? Everyone standing up, watching the watching the band, having a bevy, normal. And then you know the match was pretty much near damn it normal as well. Uh, obviously, it wasn't full capacity. It was around forty thousand, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, taking the problems outside aside, once we were in. It, it was great, and and you know no, no, normally I sit by one of my mates, but because of this and the way the tickets were bought, I was able to sit by a few of them this yep. time, and that was nice as well. And we were in a bit of a a, a nicer spec right in the middle of the cop. And yeah, you know there was loads of young lads there, loads of dads and lads there, which is always nice to see. I, I think people were able to sit with friends and family a bit more than they are normally because normally you know everyone's got season tickets or some people haven't, and there's all those issues around the normal crowd. Don't think it was the normal crowd as well. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people took the opportunity to go. Some still didn't go. Loads of faces you did see, but loads of faces you didn't see as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think it'll be interesting to see what Burnley's like because that's going to be full house, your usual spec, all of that kind of stuff. But no, it was brilliant to be back. Um, it felt near as damn it what, what we've missed. Um, you know, you'll, you'll never walk alone. Was brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant moments. You know, clapping really the clapping the side out when they when they came out onto the pitch, seeing a goal again and, and hearing a cheer for a goal. <laughs> um, and I was made up in a way that it was Jota because yeah. I remember having a conversation with you, um, Jordan. You know, we, we we signed Jota and he does so well, doesn't he? And he starts so well. But I remember saying to you, "Why is he not celebrating?" And you were like, there's no fans. And I was like, oh, yeah, there is that. <laughs> um, so I was made up for him that he, he got, it's still not the full Anfield experience, but he got some experience of scoring a goal at Anfield and, and there being a crowd there to celebrate it. There's a bit of a secret history, I think, Jamie, for the people who did go when you couldn't go and you were one of them all the way through in that I reckon there'll be some people who went, oh, they're the lucky ones. But everyone I've spoken to, every journalist I've spoken to, every commentator I've spoken to who's been in empty grounds has said, it was horrible, it was eerie, you didn't quite even know where to pitch your own performance or writing if you're a journalist, performance if you're a commentator. You must be absolutely buzzing about the idea of getting back in front of full crowds yourself almost and being able to feed off that crowd when you're doing your work. Yeah, definitely, and it was something that you, you felt privileged that the fact we were allowed to be in the game, but you, so you didn't want to speak too much or say, you know, the atmosphere is terrible, it's awful watching it and all, all that type of thing, because as I said, you know, all the fans who go home and away, they couldn't get into the ground. I was yeah. one of the lucky ones. So, but it, it was awkward. It, it just wasn't, it wasn't the same. It wasn't. And when you're actually commentating on a game, 
it's hard to get excited when there's no crowd there, no matter if something's a big moment. So, Alison's header at West Brom, mm. I'm convinced I'd commentate differently if there was a crowd there or Trent's goal later on, I think it was against Aston Villa. Yeah. It was a really vital goal for, for Liverpool in terms of uh, the Champions League positions. And for, for a commentator, they're the moments when you, you, you've you got to basically almost reenact how people are feeling in the stadium. So it's a last minute goal is just the moment that boom, you know, the, the roof comes off basically. And so you couldn't have those moments as a commentator because you didn't feel right. There, there wasn't that atmosphere to sort of uh, feed off. And there's no better crowd to feed off than playing at, uh, at Anfield. So yeah, it, we, we did miss a lot, but it was, as you say, you speak to journalists, but, and it's, me to say things privately because yeah. as I say you do want to you don't want to come over like you're spoiled or anything mm, like that exactly. but, I, but, but I think we, we, you know yeah we used to think you know listen we're lucky we're still going in to watch the games you know the supporters who've never missed a game for 20 years and because this has happened now they've had to miss games home and away wherever it may be so yeah buzzing to get the uh, the crowd back it's obviously as well Jamie I think it's meaningful for the players too there was a lot of clapping the crowd there was a lot of a lot of connection I felt I mean Van Dijk couldn't have walked off the pitch slower when he got subbed mm. uh, he was almost walking backwards at times uh, in order to be able to take that one more bit in but it's a connection that I think Liverpool have missed. I, I still think the saddest thing uh, from a Liverpool sort of point of view, from a football point of view, obviously there's lots of other sad things, but this is a team that won Liverpool's first league in 30 years and has never been clapped onto the pitch as champions properly. You know, mm. that idea of you had it yourself, you know, European champions, the idea of you go to somewhere like Old Trafford, you can hear the away end, they're reminding you of what you did last season. Mm. Those players have completely missed out on that, so I think any connection is going to be really meaningful for them, but that's, that's what they never got to have. Yeah, it's really sad, really, I think of, you know, the would have been a, a bus tour, the I, I actually think of the city as well. Yeah. You know, the revenue the city missed out on in terms of hotels, bars, everyone coming, you know, we see in the homecoming for the for the Champions League. I think a lot about that as well. Really and how it affected everyone within the city. But as I said, we know there's you know, it's been uh, things a lot worse than that. But I think for those those players they have missed out on that. And when I look back at my own career, it's not just what happens on the pitch, it's some of the things that happen off the pitch and the homecoming of, you know, in Istanbul and, you know, the scenes around St George's all and, and you never forget that. And that's what those lads missed out on. The majority of them obviously won the Champions League, but they deserved it again for you know, for what they for what they achieved. And I think this season is really interesting from Liverpool's point of view. And I'm not making excuses, but I, I do feel crowds not being there. I always felt it would affect Liverpool more than other teams. I think it really affected Sheffield United as well. Those teams who really feed off, you know, the supporters and Liverpool do, Klopp does. But also what it means for certain players. Mm. I'm convinced we'll see a difference to Sadio Mane this year just for that fact. I thought Sadio Mane's performance in the last game of the season was just night and day from what I saw all season. It was just the crowd back and he, he feeds off it. Mm. And I, I'm... I'm I'm convinced he'll be back to his best. He's looked really sharp in, in pre-season. I am a little bit more worried about uh, Roberto Firmino, I must say that. But what I'm saying is I think with the crowd back, it'd be really interesting to see if last season was just a slight dip and they were affected by the crowd. Thoughts on that? Mane looked at his... At his best, Gareth, and what I mean by that is it was you know he doesn't score, uh, he gets a nice little touch for for Jota's goal, but it's things like that touch he takes where it can look like he's miscontrolled it, but he hasn't. He's put it five yards away from himself and the defender, no, and I'm going to get to this first, and when I get to it, my body's going to be in the right place. Mm. And for me, that was the big thing about watching him yesterday was his body seemed absolutely right, his body shape was right because he's such a physically unconventional footballer, but he's so strong and quick. I was just delighted with everything you saw from Sadio Mane yesterday. Yeah, there was there, there was a swagger and a confidence about him again. There was there was one I think where he you know he, he pulls a ball out the sky and then he just yeah. sort of stood looking at the <laughs> defender. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like go on then, because I know I'm going to beat you whatever way you, whatever way you're going to come at me here. And it, you know that that like Jamie's saying, I think that was missing a bit last season. No doubt about it. It, it. it wasn't the man we know and love who we've watched for Liverpool. I think it's massive as well. Like, probably for the first time in his Liverpool career, he's had a bit of a break because he seems to have just played footy continuously for, uh, for, for club it, or it. country. That's it. And, and I, I remember us doing a pre-season, like, you know, they all get mixed up in my head, I'm shit, I remember <laughs> and stuff, but I remember we, we, went, we, did, we, did, we were doing some pre-season stuff somewhere and I remember him getting asked about the continuous football and he just said, ah, it's in your head, that. You know, and I thought, well, that's what your manager said to you, but you probably could do with a rest, mate, do you know what I mean? And he's had one now, hasn't he? So 
I think he'll be keen to, to show that last season was a bit of a blip. He, he looked on it, thought Salah looked sharp as well. Mm. Uh, okay, he doesn't score a goal, but you know, you, you're confident that you go to Carroll Road, he's, he's going to be absolutely fine. Because um, that's what you're looking for in, in these games, isn't it? I think I think that there's an element of weirdness around a pre-season game and that you're like, well, how much aren't they going in properly? Because there's not points at stake. And, the, you know, is it in the back of the mind? Unfortunately, it did happen to Robertson, obviously, but is it in the back of the mind? I don't want to get injured because I've got this far and this close now to the start of the season and things like that. So there's always those little psychological elements. But I thought overall it was decent. I mean... Bill, Bill Bauer in exactly the same place as Liverpool. They start their fixtures in a week's time as well. I would, I, I'd maybe argue if it was being a bit of an hour last that they go away more happy than Liverpool do about, about that. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, because I think defensively, you know, we're not going to be. I mean, I know it was chopping and changing and players coming back from injury, but I just thought they were going through it was a little bit too easily at times. And you know, yeah. the lad up front, Williams, was probably causing us more problems than we, you'd expect, really. Mm. On that, them going through it was a bit easily, Damien. I thought, and we'll get on to each of the individual midfielder performances, I thought all three midfielders, you come away feeling so they all play well. You know, on their own merits, you get to see Milner uh, going in for things, dictating the play quite nicely, mm. pinging it here and there. thought Kaita, head up, etc. Elliot, exciting. Mm. Uh, can see the potential of him. But they were dead porous. And oh, yeah. the extent to which you yeah. were like, this is what this is what someone like Fabinho offers you in his absence. Even mm. though you're able to say all three of those players, well, he played well. Yeah. But they were just cutting through as I felt a little bit too much. And I was thinking, Fabinho, Henderson, this is the value of yeah, these Yeah, far too much. Um, like you say, individually, you couldn't knock them. But it's all about the unit, isn't it? Yeah. And the protection that our midfields has given the team over the time and allowed our full box to bomb on and, you know, the front three and whatever, that just was not there yesterday. One bit, was it? Mm. It didn't feel like safe at all, did it? At any time, they should have scored much more than they did. Yeah. So should we. Keep it as well. The goalie, that, that was the great thing, that the goalie looked boss, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? You know, both, both goalkeepers looked very competent, didn't he? But Alisson's contribution there was he was a rock, wasn't he? And he needed to be. And know Verge was off the pace. You know, when we were talking about that, weren't we? Yeah. After the game yesterday, you know, and there was an incident where he intercepts, and usually he intercepts and passes it. But he intercepts, gives it away. And then gets turned and he doesn't even run back, does he? Do you know what I mean? It's just so unlike him. So, of course, that's going to be part of why we would look porous in defence. But the midfield, I think, is where it stemmed. And someone like Fabinho, the value of him, you enjoy watching him, don't you? But you don't half miss him. When he's not playing, you can see exactly what he brings. Both centre-halves are going to need any centre-half he picks... Jamie, because he's got the four of them, and Canate injury hit to an extent last couple of seasons, doesn't get that many games. Matt have not played till Christmas, Virgil and Joe Gomez from before then. They are all going to need protection, more protection than maybe normal mm -hmm. in the early going in this season. When the manager's thinking about it, they do need maybe Liverpool to just be a bit more solid around each of them to help them get their, get their legs back, get the game back going. Yeah, they do. And I think, well, I watched the game yesterday and a lot of the time the centre-backs were getting dragged into wide positions and they were getting down the sides a lot. And I could see there was one very early on. Virgil didn't really want to get out, really push out there. And I felt like put a cross in uh, early on down that side. And I could just see that. And it's not that's going to happen. I don't get too worried or nervous when I see things in pre-season. You know, I've, I've been there myself. But... It does, I and mean, we spoke about this for the last couple of years. I mean, it feels like every game I watch Liverpool play, the opposition go through one goal. Yeah. It's either three or four times, or at least once, you know, the keeper has to make a one on one, and we know why that is. It's the high line, that means we can press the ball more. I still do have a slight worry when I see it, when I, you know. Well, you always will. I know, I just, I look at it and I just, I just, uh, it takes me back to that Aston Villa game, and I saw it a bit yesterday, and I'm a bit like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it a little bit. Uh, not that I don't understand the high line. I totally get it. I just think there's certain situations where you've just got to be ready to run back. We're talking three or four yards. I think sometimes what we do is there's nothing wrong with having a high line, but you're ready to go back. It's like we're not ready to go back. We actually just stand there and go. I hope he's offside, or he's he's, going, he's, he's either onside, he's offside, or he's going through on goal. And I just don't think we need to risk it that much. I don't think you. Be gained too much from that. What I wonder is, they obviously protect Phillips and Williams more towards the end of last season. You get to see it. They go on that little run. Uh, you know, they win eight to ten, draw the other two, don't concede that many, but don't actually concede other than little individual errors that many chances. I just wonder if the smart move is to start the season and almost act a little bit more like it is Phillips and Williams mm. than like it's Van Dijk and Gomez or it's Canate and mm. Matip or whatever. Mm. Like, let's let protect the centre halves the way yeah. we protected those two lads at least for the first six or seven games. Let's protect them, dig in around them and acknowledge they're not quite where we're going to need them over a period of time and release it. That's what I wonder if Liverpool might do. 
Yeah, it's interesting that. I mean, in, in our day, and, and the game has, you know, slightly moved on in terms of what we expect from Fulbert. But if you, if you had, say, Sammy Ipier, after being out for a year, coming back in, well, it'll just be carry your full back, don't go forward, or you stay there, you do. Mm. But our full, but the, the game's not like that now. You couldn't tell our full backs not to do that. So the protection would maybe come from maybe more the central uh, of midfield. And I do hope, even though I think Milner's done okay in pre season in that sitting role, I, I want Fabinho playing at Norwich. Mm. Yeah. I really, I, I, because when you look at that team yesterday, you automatically think, well, is this the 11 for the Norwich game? Uh, but I just hope Fabinho comes back and I really do in that position and they will they will need protection and I said this uh, about a week ago I got asked about Virgil van Dijk we can't expect Virgil van Dijk to be back to what he was before and it's just you, you can't so you know it's whether he does play all the games or he comes out now and again and I just think it's not about him playing in the first five or six games it's about him be, you know getting back to what he was about to play next May in a final mm. exactly over the next five or six years, we still want Virgil van Dijk to be the best player he can possibly play. I wouldn't well, mind over Chelsea, though, I've got to be honest. Well, well of course you <laughs> That's the big one. I'd still want to play. I'd still, yeah. I'd still play Virgil van Dijk at Norwich. Yeah. I'd still play. Would you? One. Yeah, yeah, I'd play him. For a 90 I'd, or...? Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd put up with some of the things that we know he normally deals with, maybe getting dragged out, just for set pieces. And he just, mm. He's an absolute beast, isn't he, yeah. uh, in the air. Even his passing yesterday. Yeah. I mean, must have four or five times he played that diagonal. It just completely just changes the yeah. the attack, and he's the only one who can really. I mean, we know Trent does that from right back, but in terms of centre back, his passing ability as well, uh, and also I think there is a thing of what you've just said pre-season. I can see even for the goal, if that's at Norwich, he makes that tackle. There's Van Dijk. I'm convinced he does. He just he sort of eases. He gets there. He doesn't really want to. But I just if that's analogy makes the tackle, I'm mm. convinced of it. So I think there is a thing of, of Virgil easing himself in, rightly so. He plays with a cigarro because he's that good anyway. So he's not going to be massively intense. He's not that type of you know run, but, but like how he was, you know, you run him around like uh, like a like a lunatic at times. He's a lot more cool. Everything's always mm. composed under control. So I'd expect him to step up again a little bit. At Norwich, but no, I, I just I, I'd always play Van Dyke. I thought Matip next to him was really good, uh, and all the way through preseason, I've been impressed with Matip and impressed. Yeah. With, I've been impressed with all the with all four of them really, but I've been impressed with the other three. Uh, I thought Gomez was excellent in the Bologna hour. I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight. We're recording this before Osasuna. Looking forward to seeing Gomez tonight, but I thought Matip just looked looked assured. But you also get to see the other thing that we were missing at times last season: that passing through midfield from Matip at his feet, pings mm. at 20, 30 yards, not over the, not like Virgil, not seventy yards and amazing, but 20, 30 yards into people's feet, and they can turn and they can go. Yeah, I, I, I like. I like Matip. I, I think the only question mark is obviously his his injury record. But I think in terms of a Premier League centre half, you know, he's right up there. Like you could say, we're now we've gone from the situation where we were bringing in lads, you know, that some people hadn't even heard of to play centre half to a situation where we're arguably the best stocked in, at centre half in the league. Mm. And, and Matip's one of them. Mm. And yeah, I, I think he's looked fantastic in in pre season. Hopefully, we'll take it into into the Premier League season. And look, look, we seen those clips, didn't we? Where he's like, you know, he's skinning people in training and putting it in the mm. corner and stuff. And you're like, hang on, what's happening here? But like, he's look, you you expect with all of them, it's going to take a while. Like Jamie said, to sort of get back to what we know and loved about them, if you like. But Matip's looked the most ahead of the curve, really. So he, he's almost going into the season for me as like your senior centre half, the one who's m the nearest to his best, because. Canate has looked decent, but I think you're still going to have to be. You still got the worry in your head about he's new, mm -hmm. and, and he hasn't actually played in the Premier League yet, and things like that. And he's still a young lad, um, so so for me, there's a lot riding on Matip's shoulders. Like we go to Norwich, we play Burnley, we play Chelsea. We want Matip playing in all of those for me, uh, in an ideal world. Whether I mean, I don't know what his situation is behind the scenes. But none of us do in terms of managing his fitness, but. He looks good. He, lo he, he looks mm. near the level to me. I agree with that. I like to see him playing in all the games. And I think that the point you made about protecting the centre-backs, Neil, I think that's bang on for the start of the season. Because you look at the ingredients we've got at centre-back now. You know, there's, you know, obviously all that he brings and matter, but that way you're talking about David does pass through the pitch, doesn't he? Canate, the unit, all the, all the potential about Gomez who can go on and play 400 games, I hope, for us. We've got mm. them all there, but they're not ready. They're not ready now. And, and these points on the board, you know, we can't get... You know the, the points race that we're in with Man City, and it is them, isn't it? And yeah. Chelsea, we can't afford to lose too many and get get off 
to a bad start. So it's sort of I like... The Guardian thinks we're finished from fourth. I don't know who the three ahead of us are there, but... It's not three. There's only one. <laughs> uh, and it's up to us to make sure that there's nobody. But yeah, all the ingredients we've got at centre-back. We're so rich, aren't we now? Look at that Look at that area of the pitch now. Everything, you know, those four players give me a huge amount of confidence. They just need babying in. And I think we've just got to be a little bit cautious because coming out the ground yesterday, I just thought that Norwich game there, it's got four three written all over it. Because you know, not you would just you know, because that let it go, we're just getting in behind us all the time. Mm. But we look like we could up it and score as well. Um, the Guardian thing, by the way, the cowards, what they do is they say, oh, it's an average of a number of different writers, the, yeah, yeah, so no one's got to put the name to it. I know. Uh, yeah. It really entertains me. That's an average of someone got us at sixth. I want yeah. the stewards inquiry. Yeah. Uh, it's so we don't all get stuck into Andy Hunter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Damien, there is... Talking about those midfielders briefly before, different ways. Uh, Milner, we know Milner, we know the strengths and weaknesses. Elliot and Keita, I think, in different ways, both grab the eye. Uh, yeah. Keita is brain you got to see it knows where he is on the pitch knows where everyone is never stops mm. looking Elliot though very very high eye catching I don't think he's been great in pre-season up until this mm. one but yesterday I thought the range of passing you get to see his aggression his harrying uh, even though he's not the biggest lad and also obviously he has the, the, the great attempt where he cuts him yeah it was lovely one forwards. both both of them uh, make a pretty strong case for themselves to maybe be the third midfielder against Norwich probably and I, I, if it was <clears throat> yeah I think it was Elliot's best um, and I like Kaiser and Jürgen's given Kaiser every chance isn't he any yeah. chance he gets him, go on lads go on prove me like prove me like it's in there it's in there he deserves to be rewarded with for this Jürgen. The lad, yeah Jürgen does yeah that's what I'm saying yeah because you know he, the lad can't put 10 games in a row and, and you need that and how much you know how much more will he be able to contribute if he's in that zone where he's playing every week he's got his confidence you know and, and that but um, yeah they were good but equally they were part of that porous problem weren't they and with regard to yeah, young Elliot I just think he should play higher up the pitch than he did Mm. to start that game I don't think he's got um, he looked like he was a um, little bit easy to knock off in the midfield battles and that but whereas up front it's like he's got an eye he's got an angle hasn't he you know what I mean and if he gets the ball he can beat a man you know he's looking for that shot it, the one in the first half was probably at least as good he, missed, he shaved yeah. the post didn't it you know it, yeah, for all, we were behind that in the Annie and for, it looked all the way it was in and it would have been so fitting what, what a gem of a player that young lad is and I hope we keep him I hope we don't loan him out. I hope mm. he's going to be an option off the bench and maybe someone who's good enough to play on a Saturday on a home banker while we've got a big game on a Wednesday and keep the points total going and, and that. So, yeah, they were, they were really good, the two of them, individually. Like, But as you were saying before, but part of the unit, I'm not sure about um, Elliot playing in, in the midfield. He gives the manager a good problem, Elliot, I think, Jamie, because let's be honest about this. We're sitting here and we all want Liverpool to, to do as well as they possibly can and that means getting 100 points. We're not a finishing school for footballers, but he's clearly remarkably talented and he clearly needs to get time on the pitch and he needs to get time on the pitch with good players. So I think that's maybe why the manager's had a bit of a look at him in, in midfield. But ultimately, the serious business starts next Saturday uh, against Norwich and the manager's got a balance, hasn't he? The idea of developing Harvey Elliott uh, and a couple of others, but developing Harvey Elliott with the idea of, but you've got to win. You've got three games, you've got to win. You've got to go and win, you've got to perform. Yeah, it's a balancing act. For, certainly for Liverpool, I think our record at this moment is really good. You actually go back to Raheem Steele and bring in young players in. I think the young lad that we brought in from Derby as well looks like he's going to end up being a real good player. I think Harvey Elliott's special. I really do. I don't think there's any be any thought process of the club of him going on loan. I think he's going to be a huge part of the, the squad this season. I think Shaqiri will go and he'll take that role. When you talk about him playing midfield, the problem he's got and the manager's got is his best player plays in the same position as Harvey Elliott. <laughs> you, know, you know, a left footer player wants to play on the right, so and Mo Salah's never injured. Yeah. So and Mo Salah's going to play every game so he's got to think for the manager how do I get this lad minutes because if I don't get a minute he'll want to leave and he's a special talent so that's why we'll see him playing in midfield and that's the balancing act for Jürgen uh, right now there was a, obviously Mo went up front he then went as part of the front three mm -hmm. but I think this season it'll almost be a case of keeping Harvey Elliott happy now you might say he's a young lad well you know we're going for the league we're going for the but that is the balancing act for any manager you don't want this lad to leave the club because I think he is going to be a really special talent and I think he's going to play a lot of games this season but in terms of the midfield I actually go back to a game two years ago and Oxley Chamberlain scored two away in a European game scored two great goals mm. I can't I think it may Gank. have been Keita yeah uh, Basically, Henderson wasn't playing, yeah. and Fabinho was basically in midfield on his own. And even though we won the game two or three nil, Oxley Chamberlain got a lot of goals. You looked at the midfield, and you think we need at least two grafters, if you like, and one. So for me, Keita and Elliot is almost 
not two luxury players, but more, you know, getting thrown at times, yeah. leaving that one exposed. So I would think you pick one of them, I want to, whoever it may be. But listen, we've been crying out for a lot, for a long time about saying, do we need someone in this squad who can make that killer pass? Shakiri can do that. Our front three don't really do that. It's all about you know, running in behind Salah, Mane, the same, the midfield work, they play the pass that we all see in the ground. When it comes to one of our midfielders, you know what pass they're going to make, which is fine. And then there for other things. We don't have too many players in the squad who make a pass that people don't see in the ground. You go, oh, didn't see that. Mm. I think Harvey Allen can produce that. And also we don't have anyone in the squad who can actually score from outside the box. Really that much. You know, you, 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 you had Coutinho before, you had Steve and we were playing. It's just nice sometimes to have some. You think, oh, we can hit one. Harvey Allen might be that one. You know, as well, just get that goal from outside the box. That's something I just think might be a problem for us this season in terms of goals. I'm more worried about us getting goals this season than maybe what's going to happen defensively. So if he plays in the middle then, so, uh, if he plays in the middle, you're looking for Fabinho and Henderson, two grafters, to give yeah. him the licence. Yeah, or uh, the Kaita could... Which is what Shakiri has screamed for all this time and never really got. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a spell when he first joined Shakiri that was... Uh, if you go back to Shakiri's first few games... That's how Jürgen got him in the team. Mm. He started playing a part of the mid midfield three. I think Huddersfield away was a game that he played. I don't think he got the goal there or Mo got the goal. But a home against Southampton and he goes yeah, off he got, time. He he got the time. How, how yeah. can I get him in yeah. the team? You know, uh, and, and when I'm talking about Shaqiri making that pass, what was the pass last season? I think it was early on the season. He Sheffield United or West Ham at home. Yeah, he plays just, now, nah, we, yeah. Uh, we haven't got... Lots of players in the team who can make that pass. I don't think that the one to Jota. Yeah, yeah Jota yeah, got. I think it was West Ham, but I think Harvey Elliott could be that. You just see, man, he's always probing, he's always looking. He obviously when he went at the full back and and bent it in. So I think he does provide something different. And, and as I said, I think he's going to have a huge role this season. Yeah, he looks fantastic. I, I think you know you you've got to remember he's eighteen years old, and I think sometimes you see a kid who come on for Liverpool normally as pre season, isn't it? These days, and you think. You look like a kid. Do you know what I mean? You look mm. like you're swimming in that chair. You look like, you know, you you you're, you're fresh out of school basically. Mm. And and sometimes some of them play it in that way, like a safe way, like they don't, they, you know, don't want to put a foot wrong. There's obviously a lot of pressure on them and that kind of thing. Whereas Elliot's already at 18, got this swagger about him, hasn't he? Yeah. And like you know that one that hits the bar, like if it had gone in, the roof would have come off. It was it was brilliant mm. to to manoeuvre into the position to create it and then to execute it. You, like you said, there was one in the first half which people are talking about less, but that was quality as well. Yeah, really was, there's a yeah. ball to Mar, I think he plays, which is one of, them, yeah. one of them balls you're on about that you don't see it. And then when he plays it, you're like, oh, fucking hell, where's that mm. come from? And this is a lad at 18. And I think we've got to remember as well, Real Madrid had a, a, a good go at getting him. Do you know what I mean? And Liverpool got him. Mm. So he, he's, a, he's an exceptional talent. And I think we've said a few times, like we're not breaking no confidence that when we were doing an interview with uh, Henderson, wasn't it? Uh, a couple of seasons ago or whatever, you know, we were talking to Henderson and Matt McCann, and and they were they were saying the lads are talent, like, and it's it's just about everyone's like wow behind the scenes, and it's just a question of you know when not if basically with them. So I, I can see what Jamie's saying there as well about almost the dilemma around it. Like it's like we've got all these players and you, you've got to give him time. Now he's ready. He's done his stint in the Championship. He wants to play in the Premier League. And if he doesn't get a go somewhere, he's going to start saying, well, hang on, I'm, re I'm ready. This yeah. is I, I think the do. timing of it, oh, I mean, what, what's Mo Salah now? 29-30? You mm. know, we want Mo Salah here, don't we, for the next two or three years. He's going to sign yeah. a new contract, I would imagine. He's going to be here for three or four years. You could probably keep Harvey Elliott happy for the next couple of years, minutes in different positions, but eventually he's going, I'm looking at him thinking... That, that's his position. Eventually, yeah. you've almost got the ready-made replacement, not the, exactly the same type of player, different type of player to Mo Salah in some ways. And it's just keeping him happy, giving him enough, basically, time. And, he, and each year, he's going to want more minutes. And it's just doing, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm in the entry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the intensity thing before Damien talked about in the game, Gareth. I think... 
I think what actually shifted, I thought it was quite full-blooded first 20. These are footballers who haven't played in front of crowds, uh, you know, the, a week away from the start of the season. I thought it was quite full-blooded. I think it changes for everyone when Robertson gets injured. I think everyone goes, all right, we're calming down now. Yeah. It's half-time immediately afterwards as well, so that mm. doesn't really help. But I felt as though everyone just sort of went, hang on, it's a pre-season friendly, this, we don't want any, any more of this. I think it burst um, everyone's balloon a little bit. It did, didn't it? it? it did. On and off the pitch. Yeah, the crowds, mm. the crowds yeah. deflated because we've seen so many injuries recently. Now, we don't know, we haven't got any, any information at the time of recording where, where, where it ended up but it was a blow to see I thought Beck does alright when he comes on by the way I thought lots of credit to himself to be honest with you but you did just have that moment of oh god not more of this we just could do without this at least he walks off but then as someone said to me Virgil walked yeah, off Virgil walked off Everton it looked like it, it looked like he, he took the full impact of the, the cross against his against his foot and then that's why his, his foot's in, a, in the wrong position sort of when he lands and you, you could hear him on the cop scream basically uh, as he landed so it, it was definitely a nasty one um, I mean I'm no doctor but you know I, I, I sort of can't see that he's sound for, for Norwich basically I, I, I imagine he's done something ligament wise or something like that and he's mm. going to be out for a couple of weeks which is a real shame because he obviously plays every single Premier League game for, for Liverpool last season and you know Simicast has done all right pre-season but he's got 10 minutes of senior appearances under his belt for Liverpool that's it mm. and, and like I'm not sure he understood fully why that was like you know I know people kept saying well it's the thing that Klopp does where if they're not fully settled into the system they have to work hard behind the scenes to get the go there was times I thought where Robertson was chugging last season and needed some minutes on the bench or out of it a little bit so I don't know I, I, I mean, I, you know, we will see, won't we? Yeah. It's, it's going to be Simakas at Carroll Road, I would have thought. It's going to be Simakas tonight against Osasuna as yeah, well, to be fair. Well. He's, going to get, he's going to get another 19 yeah. as well. I mean, it, something's got to happen with him, hasn't it, where his, his highlight is not, or, or, or the thing he's most remembered for is not Milner saying, yeah, fuck's sake, cost us. Yeah, yeah. Cost us <laughs> fucking hell, yeah. ball. Um, So we'll see. But it, yeah, it's a real shame, isn't it, Robertson? Because I think he adds so much energy to what Liverpool do. You know, he, he's not... I think Trent gets a lot of the glory about around what's happening at fullback, but but for me Robertson's one that adds a lot of energy to the ground at times in terms of putting tackles in, in terms mm. of charging forward, in terms of I know he's not a captain, but he, he's like a captain on the yeah. pitch. Oh yeah, defo yeah. What a, what a loss uh, to our team. We, you know, the teams. He's as good a left back as we've as I've seen. Sorry, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> you were better in the middle. Um, only, only had one season in the <laughs> You did all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we see, he, he, with the energy of it and the fitness and the robustness of it and the way that we play and the we move and you know and that that high line you're talking about and that the reason why we do it and, and we do, we'll gamble because we can trust VAR to get the offside right so we've got that little bit more of an, and so we can absolutely pen teams back and he's such a part of that, isn't he? You mm. know, and well, Milner goes over there and does a good job over there, like. Milner's just great at everything, isn't he? But he's just not that, and he's got a check in on the other side, and he's not quite overlapping as much. This Simicast lad obviously must have been so near and yet so far about getting a game at all. And because we were really up against it with the points total, weren't we? And, you know, financially for the club, they had to finish in that big cup. You know, everything, you know, is rolling forward, and it's like, listen, we're going to have to run Robertson into the floor. You can have a rest over the summer. And mm. never mind Scotland, we're not asked. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just that's how it is. That's business, isn't it? So this, this lad, um, there must be nothing worse than getting dropped into a team every now and again, and you're not, you know, you must need that run of games. That's that must have meant a lot to you. I mean, if so, if you had the confidence of the manager, who would say to you, for example, look, there's three games there, you're playing in the three of them, mm -hmm. and and you know, I'll, 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 we'll talk, we'll talk about it on the other side of the three. Do you think that that might go through the mentality of what, with Liverpool here, and then might that help you, McCass, become? the competent left-back cover that we hope he is, because I think he's looked decent when, when I've seen him. Mm. But it's hard when it's in and out, and in and out. Mm. You've got, you need to run, surely. Yeah, and, and he won't have the confidence of the support yet, or the managers, no one's really mm. seen him play. And that the, there's nothing worse than knowing you haven't got the full confidence of your manager. Mm. I always felt that when I played for England, that I never... <laughs> I told you, he, always, he, he doesn't really want me in there. He wants... John Terry or Rio, you, you, you always you always get that feeling mm. uh, when you're playing. And as a young lad coming into Liverpool, you, you want to play a game where you feel like if you have a bad game, you're not necessarily going to be out the team. You've got the confidence of the man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So he, until he plays and proves that he hasn't got that, uh, but it'll be nice for him to know that you know he's not going to get dropped if he doesn't play great at Norwich because he's the only left back there. Mm. You know. Uh, 
So listen, it looks like he, he will play. I mean, when you talk about Robertson, I'm disappointed he's going to be out. But watching it on TV, I could see Robertson's face. I thought, looking at his face, he feared he broke his ankle. He looked as he was actually looking at him when the physio come on, Chris Morgan. It was like one of them where he didn't want to actually look at his own mm. ankle. I think he thought initially it was one of those where his ankle might be facing the wrong way, and I mm. was like, oh my God, because he just doesn't go down. So actually, when I seen him walk off, he wasn't on crutches leaving the ground, I don't think, but uh, he doesn't go down easy anyway. You know, he's one of them, he'll, he's a really tough lad, so that's the, the little worry as well, that it might be a little bit worse. But if someone said to me now, he's going to miss the first three games, I'd probably, I'd probably take that now, I just hope it's not worse mm. than that. On that though, as Damien's saying there, the idea of there's actually almost a bit of an argument, certainly for the first two. It might almost be better for Liverpool if it is a bit more of a block. So if you are Shimakash, you're not thinking to yourself, "Oh, I'm only in here," and as soon as this fella can 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 run half well, he's going to be back in for me. You know what I mean? Like mm. almost a bit of clarity of first three are out, hoping to have him back start of September. Because this afternoon, Shimakas, he's not human if he's not sat there before this game thinking, I've got to perform here today now. I've got mm. to really I've got to make sure I am in that team next week. That's what he that's everything that should be going through his head as we record this. He should be you know, tonight's one of the biggest games of his career in a really weird way. Because it's his opportunity in front of Anfield to say to the manager, It's all right, I've got it. First three, don't worry about it. Yeah, and everyone will be watching him tonight, won't you? That'll be the big oh, story. How does Simicast He's play? got a big arrow above his head, hasn't he, now? Yeah. Mm. You know, everyone's going to watch him. Everyone's looking at this team thinking, well, this is almost the, the second string. Yes, uh, yesterday was the team that we think will play at Norwich or there or thereabouts, but tonight it's all about how the left-back plays. That's what yeah. everyone will be watching tonight uh, more than anything. And I think on the back of uh, not doing well last season, and I know he was really disappointed. They actually... Uh, I'll give them a little shout out actually. Sato, uh, where I get my suits from. He's very pally with them and he, and he uh, gets us a bit of clobber off him as well. So I've met him a couple of times in the shop and all that. And he, the lad who runs the shop, Costas, was, uh, he was saying how disappointed he was that he hadn't really come in and, and showed what he, what he can do. So hopefully this will give him a chance. So as I said, he was disappointed. With, uh, with what happened last season or not really getting too much of a goal, but that's that's going to be the case when you've got the quality in front of you like that. Um, the other thing that comes from the game, Gareth, is the problems getting in. Uh, the situation yeah. was brewing for hours in terms of people getting in. I couldn't believe it. I turned up at 3.40, uh, come from seeing town. You. Uh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> um, you just too far away, but I've seen you. Paper tickets uh, that we had, because we went on the NFC, and we just walked in, into W. We just absolutely, we, we walked through queues and then got to our turnstile and mm. literally just, just straight in um, yeah. and went from there, me and Steve. It's... It was frustrating. It was frustrating, obviously, for the delayed kickoff. It creates a situation where, for me, what's most concerning is the lack of trust. That everyone needs to believe this process is going to work around these NFC tickets. That's what they've chosen to do. They've gone in that direction. And it's a big gamble because the ground hasn't been operational for 18 months, if we're all honest. Yeah. So it's trying to make itself operational again and do this change all at once. And the idea that people are going to end up really, really distrusting that process with a half 12 against Burnley on the yeah. horizon, it doesn't bode well for me, this. No, and, and look, you know, the there was a, an interview in the Echo, uh, I think it was last week, which um, Phil Dutton, News the guy yeah, the tickets did, and I read that, and he was sort of talking about, you know, uh, the, the confidence they had in it, and, and also he talked about, you know, that they, were, they knew of the habits of, of fans, i.e. what time fans turn up, when they go in, all of that type of stuff, because they've obviously got all that uh, as data from the cards who've been using to get in for, for years. And then it it, it, it it patently didn't work, did it? You know, to, to have those cues, to have to, to delay the kick-off twice, all of that kind of stuff. And you've now got this sort of, like, Liverpool need to say something else now. Do you know what I mean? I know they put out a statement last night, but it didn't say too much other than, obviously, there was a problem, which we could all see. Um, I mean, one thing, you know, you would say is that you, you can't be pointing any fingers whatsoever at people who are turning up to go to the football match. No, it's, it, it, it's, it's not our fault. Um, you know, we haven't said that we wanted these tickets. You've 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 imposed them on, on us, and it's up to you to make sure that that system works. I mean, I queued for I think it was forty to forty five minutes to get in. Uh, I wouldn't have made it if it was four o'clock. So I was obviously glad of the delay. I got in about ten past four in the end. Um, bizarrely, when I got up to the actual turn start, it was absolutely fine. It was just there was a delay. You know, there was a there was a lag. But when I got up and I scanned at my phone, it, it worked straight away and I was in. So what was the mm. problem then? Because I haven't sort of, I've obviously got season tickets myself. Really I, really can I, I've got a contribution people on People not yeah. putting the phone, is it like the phone's thing's not working or? My observation of it was, it was a friendly atmosphere, it was mild-mannered, it was all that. 
I understand the club have got to do something with the technology. I understand it's the way of the world it's all going. They've got to do it somewhere. So without saying it, it was pre-season for them as well. Mm. And the staff, the stewards and all that, was dead sound, dead patience. But what I, the observation I'll make is, I was made up to see so many kids there. Yes, yeah. you know, yesterday. I'm made up to see, you know, when, when you go, when you, when we go to the match, you know, everyone's open, yeah? you know, you're going to your turn, start, you're yeah. walking and you're letting on to everyone. And if you're not on, to, you know, on first name terms, you're sitting on letting on terms with everybody and everyone knows this, knows the gig and you've got your ticket and it's ready and it's swiped in and the stewards know, you know, it's like a military operation almost and you're part, you're the army. Do you know what I mean? And, you, and you're in and that's it. But I noticed it was a bit different and there was people who quite clearly hadn't had the opportunity to support Liverpool in the way that they wanted and great to see them, you know, get that opportunity, come to the ground and that. But they were a bit on, slow on the uptake, I found. So, for example, in the queue that we were going through, there's like two turnstiles, isn't it? Two gates at the turnstile yeah. that you're going through. But at some point I was at the queue that we were in, the people didn't really realise there was another one open and they were just waiting for this other one. Mm. And then the stewards were like being nice and they were going, come on, you can move up a bit, you know. You can. But the so, queues were so big that people didn't know what letter, if you like. Yeah, and so that, that's, that, that was an issue. For because well. what should have happened... Because stewards weren't filtering down saying like, this is the line for B or Spot whatever. on there, I was going to say that, yeah. yeah. So the stewards were coming down and saying, yeah, I'll come in and all, but they should have been like... Let's all double you, everyone. Let's all double you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah. can we help you out? And, and, a, and a steward for each line, for example. I never had to learn, haven't they? You know, the club. And so you, we have to have a bit of understanding about it, the kickoff getting delayed. But in the thing that they're doing with the, with the tickets, Damien, is, as Gareth said before, this is what they want to do. They want to have this technology yeah. on these tickets. And they're not alone, by the way. It'll be Premier League wide in three years' time for everything, yeah. you know, for a ways as well. It'll be everywhere. Let's just be clear about that. As you said before, it's the direction of travel. But I think, therefore, it is important that it's working and it's smooth. Oh yeah, the first yeah. trial because what's happened is everyone's come out and now the way in which the world is, it's not just kept to the people who are at the ground. Everybody knows. Everybody does the videos. Yeah. They're absolutely everywhere. The club's then got to make the statements. The club makes the statement. The statement then, as Gareth says, it doesn't give you enough detail. You're like, is there going to be a further yeah. statement? There's yeah. another game tonight. Yeah. And I think that, that this is a you know this is the the problem. If you do change, people are, uh, around football especially people hate change. Mm. They absolutely hate it. They oppose it at every opportunity. If you do change. If you don't get it right, it's ten times worse than the positive of if you did get it right. If you yeah, sort of see what yeah. I mean, it, it it creates a massive air of because I don't know what time now people are going to start to try to get into the ground for Burnley. It could be berserk. There could be people to turn up at, at half nine because they want to make sure they're going to yeah. get in for a half twelve, and half twelves are frantic enough. I think the um, and I agree with that about the half twelve thing. Um, they've obviously got tonight to work out yeah. first and so I don't think they'd say too much I think they'd be unwise to say too much until the other side of that so they do tonight yeah. and then, and they, then, then they a full make report announcement. on this is now. how this is going to work now so for example what worked when we went the um, the last game of last season I think it was 10,000 of us I think yeah and so what they said was we're going to stagger the times and obviously that would be unheard of no one ever gets you know don't tell me what time I'm getting in and whatever but if you've got to <laughs> particularly our lot you know what I mean but equally we've got to play the game together and it's hard, this, you know, so here I am saying to, you know, my fellow Liverpool supporters, maybe the club needs to do something. I don't know if staggering the, the you know, the, if you're in the middle blocks, can you please try and get in a little bit earlier? And if you're in the outside blocks, can you just come a little bit later because of the dynamic or however it is they've got. But they've given themselves, you're, you're spot on, they've given themselves a hospital pass, haven't they? Mm. Now, at some point, like you see, two, two or three years from now, it'll be... By, how come we never had this all the while? It's all, yeah. Isn't it marvellous? But at this point, with change in football fans, do, you do not like being dictated to. Because we, you know, we feel like we own, I, I own my spec in the cop, thank you very much. Don't be telling me how I come in. Don't be telling our lads who have been there a million years, you know, how, how this works. I think you, some, it's your problem to get us in. I think there was it's some your issue problem. With, you, you could obviously print them out, couldn't you, as well? And on, on the printout, it's then got your QR code. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? What, what I heard of some people was that. The, those QR codes on the printouts, there was some struggle with some of them scanning. Ah, right, mine um, was smooth. I, that's what I was on. I was. But I wondered as well about the app side of it. Like you know, I can see on my phone my season ticket, and then it, it says what the next game is that you're going to. So all week it didn't say I was going to this game. So obviously me and my mates have all got a bit of anxiety going. <laughs> yeah. Still not sure we're not let You know what I mean? You get onto the club and all that, and then event. I think it was Friday in the end. It shows up, but you, you can like refresh it all the time yourself manually. And, and when we were doing that manual refresh, it then eventually came up. But I thought, even when our anxiety was settled because it was showing, I thought, how many people know know yeah. to do that? 
would even think to do that. How many people have got in the club, oh, yeah. or how many people have just left it to the day? We'll turn up the turn. And, turn and, yeah. and, and, and here's one. This, yeah, what, here's, what here's just, here. yeah. So one of our lads. That, that would have been me as well. I'd have been yeah. exactly the same. Well, I was made up by a print tickets. One of our lads um, came up yesterday, and he's worked. And you know, I had no faith in him being able to work this out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, I'm, so you know, all our old boys out the Stanley sounds. You know what I mean? We, you know, we're all looking out for each other. But I really struggled. You know, I you know, I use computers on a daily basis with work, but and, and all that. But I, I was struggling. You know, to be fresh thing. And my, so one of my mates went yesterday didn't have any intention of going to the game wanted a pint wanted to see a few of the lads but just wanted to see if he can get this thing on his phone or not so he wasn't going that match he said I'll go up then so he goes to the ticket office his, his phone can't get it on can't get it on the phone so he's got to have a paper ticket or a card he's got to knock here or something I don't know stop you know playing yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's beyond John like I'm telling you but what I mean is for someone like him and, and we have so many thousands of supporters he's been everywhere with Liverpool you know, he needs to be looked after He's left the ground yesterday, and at this point in time, they still can't get him in. Yeah. Well, well, you know, this is you know, and this is coming over the hill quickly, isn't it? And like you say, half twelve, Burnley, and if there is crowd problems, it's going to reflect bad on everybody. So there's been a statement, twelve noon. Oh, uh, yeah. LFC update ahead of so I'll read, read it out in full. LFC update ahead of second pre-season home game. Uh, download your NFC pass, be ticket ready, get into Anfield early, free soft drinks for kids before six pm. You don't want to give them too much sugar. Uh, <laughs> got multiple tickets on one phone. Uh, print off at home for faster entry. Uh, so Liverpool FC would like to update supporters on its new entry process to make access ahead, to, quicker and more efficient ahead of tonight's pre-season match against Osasuna. Kick off seven pm. We'd like to thank everyone who attended the first pre-season home game yesterday against Athletic Club for the patience and understanding whilst accessing Anfield with a number of changes have been made to the way fans can now use tickets at the turnstiles these pre-season games have been a trial to test the new NFC technology and the new entry system to Anfield some issues were identified while fans were entering the stadium yesterday and following a full review and debrief of the process improvements and key learnings have been made ahead of tonight's match turnstiles will open at 4pm today and we are encouraging supporters to arrive early kids who enter the stadium before 6pm can receive free soft drinks as a thank you supporters were also asked to ensure they fully prepared when they come to the turnstiles making sure they've downloaded their NFC pass uh, so as Gareth saying you need to refresh it and, re and ready to scan their tickets when reaching the turnstile we are strongly encouraging families and groups where possible to print their e-tickets off at homes so phones don't have to be passed back and forth to get through the same turnstiles that was obviously this will speed though. up yeah, the, uh, yeah. the entry process uh, we look forward to welcoming more fans back to Anfield and uh, thank you for your continued support and understanding just on that quick I've just come back from Portugal and one of the things you guys have a lot of paperwork and one of the things that was difficult was people obviously felt it was more efficient to have the paperwork on the phone but what that meant was I had a group of six in front of me trying to get into port through Portuguese customs and the going screen by screen the phone's getting passed backwards and forwards yeah. with the immigration person and screen by screen they're having to go through everything but for each of these six people and they're doing it in the round and honestly they're there for 15 20 minutes mm. because they they feel well if it's on your phone it'll be more efficient there'll just be a QR code they'll just scan it we had our stuff just printed off and the basically the photographer office went that's that's right that's right that's right through you go and I think sometimes you can feel but this is the club but the club have imposed this technology gap yeah. you can feel like technology is a solution and there's a lot they're trying to solve and we all know Towton's a problem if we're all honest about it maybe we don't talk about enough we all know Towton's a problem this is the solution they're trying to do but if your solution creates other problems you've got to have a contingency plan and you've got to communicate yeah absolutely I mean at least they've done that today and, and I think you can read between the lines and obviously see some of the issues there um, but what, like you said Damien what, what will happen here is that you know and you said as well you know people do not like change to their routine around the game there'll be loads of people why should I get in there yeah. early and you know I don't want soft drinks mm -hmm. so because <laughs> a lot of people want, want a bevy in there I don't want to pay, yeah, don't want to pay got, five and a half quid yeah. for a, a, less than a pint of Guinness I mean, you know? and that's yeah. the thing isn't it you know that if, you want us to, if you want us to drink in the ground or you want us to eat in the ground then don't do not do daft prices because we know we know we can go to the Charlie and get it for you know two and a half quid less than that or, mm -hmm. or whatever do you know what I mean so there is there is a bit of that going on as well um, but yeah it's good that they put that out isn't it and obviously we'll all see how it unfolds tonight uh, alright moving forward back to the football uh, before we worry about the way in which it goes on Saturday the biggest story in the football world really Jamie has been Leo Messi there's better people better informed people than certainly myself uh, to talk about Leo Messi uh, and Barcelona in the very specific case I've never been other than when they played Liverpool I've never been fortunate enough to see him play for Barcelona and that opportunity is now missed for me though you're in a situation where Barcelona have got to let a lot of players go Real Madrid have got to let a lot of players go Paris Saint-Germain now and probably anyway are making noises like they've got to let a lot of players go you look up and down England every big club seemingly has got a list of players they're trying to let go and Liverpool are no different it's become a 
a difficult situation, I think, for all of these clubs and for many more as well to be able to move people on. This is where the pandemic is biting. There's room for some clubs to be able to spend a hundred million and all that sort of stuff, but there's a lot of footballers who bigger clubs have decided they've got no real use for the services of anymore. Who are still in dressing rooms, who are still in squads, and I don't quite they they can't all move, and I suspect a lot of them aren't going to. No, and ever since I can remember football since I was a kid. Everybody says the, exactly the same thing at the end of the season. We've got to get rid of the Deadwood. Every single fan says it all. Every club. <laughs> and they're still there when you come back first day of pre-season. Uh, and it's hard to get rid of them. I think the problem is the pandemic, obviously. So people have been a lot more careful with the money. I think, when I say a problem, I don't want this to sound like a, a bitter ex pro I, I'm. I think wages, when I say are a problem, I haven't got a problem with anyone earning whatever they, yeah. they can. And I think it probably goes back to even a situation maybe even with Wijnaldum at Liverpool now uh, and maybe even Emery Chan before that way. Wages now, when you sign a player over a four-year deal, it's, it's a transfer fee. Mm. And I think we've got to... I keep sort of mentioning this and I think even our own supporters, when we see our players getting new contracts, that's a, that's a huge outlay for mm. the club. And when you think about say for instance the wine alden situation say if you know if you sign a four year deal you're probably talking 25 30 million pound that, that it's a transfer fee so wages now are that big that other clubs will not take that on you know mm. everyone says about their own dead well do you want to take your dead well, you know but now i just think players are in and great sums and good luck to them but i think that is that is a problem then when you're trying to move a player on in this climate that we're in now, uh, obviously with the pandemic, but it's it, it, it's huge figures, it really is, and that, that that's a big problem. Just on quickly, I, I, the phrase Deadwood, let's be clear about this, Sheridan Shikiri and Divock Origi, uh, two examples of people who might get classified in Liverpool in a Deadwood sense, both have contributed massively to the club and to his success mm, oh, across yeah. the last couple of years, so it's not, I don't like it when that sort of, when, when supporters do sort of voice it like that, and also the other part of this as well is that, the you know, there's nothing to suggest they're not both really good professionals, mm. but where you end up, Jamie, because they've signed for Liverpool, because they've got a big deal or they've got a new contract or something like that, the same thing sort of applies, isn't it? You know, the, these lads shouldn't have to take pay cuts if Liverpool have, have promised them a certain amount. They can choose to it if they can choose to if they want to go and play somewhere else. But they'll always also feel as though realistically, maybe I'm wrong, but all it'd be for any for either of those two to keep using them as an example is a step down. You know, you're in a situation where ultimately. If I said to you right now, Manchester City win both domestic cups this season, we wouldn't go, oh, that never happens. It happens almost every year. The only mm. way to win silverware is to play for one of these teams. So it, it, it isn't as though they'd be taking a pay cut because they'd be more likely to be part of a side contributing to winning silverware. They're less likely to win silverware. They're getting less money. The only thing they might possibly be getting is a bit more game time. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's interesting, the the mm -hmm. you one. Because <laughs> I do think, <laughs> you know, that he gets the goal. Uh, that wins us the European Cup. He signs a big contract that summer. I think that's almost. I, I've been watching a difference to Rigi the last two years since he signed that contract. There's no doubt in my mind. I think that money is on. I think he switched off a bit because I think when he came first came to the club, even in the early stages under Jurgen Klopp, he was never as bad as he's been in the last 12, 18 months, couple of years. He wasn't. He was a good backup player. He get goals. He get goals in big games. Uh, he always thought there was room for him to improve and I just don't know if he's took his foot off the pedal I don't think he was ever going to be first choice for Liverpool I don't think he was mm -hmm. ever of that quality but he was certainly really good backup I felt and now you look at him and you think and let's be totally honest we all say the same thing when he comes on he starts a game you're thinking oh are you, mm -hmm. you know and you, you watch him play and you're thinking there's absolutely nothing there and we, we, we need more mm -hmm. in terms of backup in terms of quality we need more than, than what he's given and I can only go back to, to that contract he's given and I think he, he the only the reason I can give is he's took his foot off the pedal I think I think with him one of the things that I I've got a bit of sympathy with him. I do agree with you, by the way, but I don't think it's necessarily since that contract. I think if you go back, he gets a brace against Everton, December 2019, plays ever yeah. so well. And there's a few yeah. games before then, you know, he plays the first one against Norwich. And I think that what hits him is the gulf between me and those three is so big. I'm never getting... I'm not, there's nothing I can do. 
in terms mm-hmm. of getting the get because yeah. I, I play against Everton uh, in that game. Uh, you know, I get the game against Everton. The next time I get used, it's it, it, from the start. It's in the World Club Championship. Then I don't play the next one after that, and then they don't see me again until the FA Cup, and then you don't see me again until the FA Cup fourth round. And I wonder if there's a thing there. You were saying before about Harvey Elliott in minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was if just going to say if you're that. a Rigi, you're yeah. going well. What's I can't do any more than play in the Merseyside derby score two <laughs> to, to say give me a run of games give me a run of games he, I get what you're saying but I think he knew his role in the squad oh absolutely he, and and, mm. and if he he was that upset about it yeah I think he had the opportunity last summer to go to Wolves I think Wolves yeah. were after him for a while hey, I'm going to play probably decent money for the club you know he didn't want to go okay that's fair enough that, as you said he signed a contract and good luck to him what, what he's earning uh, but I, I always feel in a squad, people always talk about people challenging for places. I'm a big believer that there should only be two places up, two, three maximum up for grabs. Yeah. People need to know who's playing and you need players who understand what their role is in the squad. Now, at this moment for Liverpool, we'd possibly say what roles are really up for grabs? One of the midfield positions, maybe, and maybe playing alongside Van Dijk now because of the options that we've got and everyone else knows who's playing. And that's why at times it is difficult who do you bring in as backup for Robertson when you know he's going to play every game? Who do you bring him back up for the minor, you, you know, Trent? It's difficult because those players know who you bring in. They know they're not playing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's that's the balancing act that we've, we've sort of, you've got as a manager and there'll be players who think they're nearly there. So Kaiser will always think he's got half a chance of playing. Mm. You know, he, you're not quite sure. Jota, he's going to put real pressure on that front three. But, you know, there should only be three or four of those in the squad and the other four or five squad players, no, they're not going to play. And Origi has always been that for me. So I, I get what you're saying, but there's no way, you know, we, we can all talk about, and you're talking about him as an individual. He must be disappointed if he wasn't playing that one or he scored two against Devon. But I tell you what, you'd have been disappointed if Marley wasn't playing the next game. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, 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 this yeah. is the point. I'm like, yeah, because, and, and going back to it, you know, talking about Elliot in, in particular, this is a young boy on the way up, so hopefully we're going to drip, drip him in and the time's right for him to say, well, it's okay, you're sub. But for these established players, you know, kind of Rigi and Shakiri, I think they'd have gone, if it hadn't been for the pandemic, they wouldn't be here now. That's my mm. opinion. They're definitely good enough to play first-team football at a very high level somewhere. They've had great times at Liverpool, but if they're not playing every week, they're not even playing every fourth game or whatever. You're going to lose your tricks, aren't you? It's what must be great in training, but you must rate that that zone that you're in playing an hour and a half, twice a week. You know, you're really at the peak of your powers there, aren't you? And if you're getting dripped in here and dripped in there, and then if you look at Origi, the style of him, never mind the ability, the style of Origi is so different than the others. It's just that, like you say, you want Mane in the next game, don't you? Because you, you just, so unless you're playing him against Cannon Fodder, or unless he's absolutely at his peak, and I think we've, we've gone past that with him. And it's difficult for him, isn't it? And I've got so I've got sympathy with um, a position where he's going to have to try and force his way in. But it's just like you say, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way for him. And the best thing would be for him to get a good deal somewhere else. It's going to be pandemonium. Last couple of weeks, Gareth, I think a lot of clubs haven't moved. I, I was talking to West Ham support. They're astonished they've not done anything uh, for one of our other shows recently. Wolves haven't done very much at all. Uh, Evan have done a couple of the wide players, not done anything else really of note. You begin to go down the division. There's a lot of football teams who still haven't moved, and I think it's because they still don't know quite what they're moving for or why. Mm. I think, and I think they're also trying to be responsible around cash for a variety mm. of different reasons. But I reckon it is going to be pandemonium the last couple of weeks. This. Yeah, it feels like you know it's it's going to be like a field day for for Jim White because it, I, it feels like you know the I think he might have packed in now. The, well, whoever's mm. to o- Jim White, whoever's <laughs> took over the yellow tie or whatever, because it, it just feels like there's you know the, the, there's a bit of a standoff. You know, the, the, there could be a bit of a domino effect when things start happening. Like, I, I don't think the huge deals like Grealish or Sancho or whatever were, were really going to spell. Although saying that, Villa have obviously done some business now and Grealish. Villa have been going. busy, haven't they? Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think there's o- there's other examples of if someone moves or that. You know, we know there's the situation at Liverpool, for example, with the with the quota of the home homegrown. Home yeah. So they need to move someone on before they could potentially get someone else in. So there's things like that, and and that probably applies to a lot of clubs. So it feels like it's all. Footy's doing that mad thing that Footy does at times where everyone's looking at everyone else there's a bit of a Mexican standoff situation but then there could be a big flurry at the end mm. Okay just very quick then the whole thing starts next Saturday you must be excited back uh, back, back working properly humans around excitement noise the big hit what games are you doing first yes, week? Yes I'm doing uh, Brentford Brentford Arsenal Ooh. so we're going to get back to uh, before obviously last season happened we uh, were doing like a Friday night football show myself Gary and uh, Kelly Kate so 
we'll be doing that from Brentford so I'll watch the Liverpool game it's it's one of those I think it's a good one to miss not easy to get back from Norwich is it <laughs> <laughs> when then when then uh, my games come through I was like, oh yeah that was a nice one I had myself down for Norwich Liverpool but no we're doing the Friday night football Brentford Arsenal uh, I'm really looking forward to it got a bit of homework to do this week and uh, watch Brentford uh, they played Valencia. Uh, I think Saturday night's so recorded that I watched that this week. Have a look at the playoff final. Mm. Get to grips with them. New team in. So, yeah, excited for it. Absolutely. And Carrow Road, uh, the energy will be enormous, Damien. We've yeah. got to remember this. This is Carrow Road's first game back. You know, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm really excited. And I think our players will rise to that, to that sort yeah. of adrenaline rush. It'll be noisy at Carrow Road. Cup tie uh, effect, yeah. I, that's what Last I'm expecting. Five on a Saturday, new season, fans back in. So you keep ticking the boxes here about all the ingredients. They'll fancy the chances, won't they? They'll um, let them. Yeah, yeah, and and great, you know, bring it on because if they want to go toe to toe with us, that'll suit us, I think. Absolutely, it's important to just to start where we left off. Eight wins out of ten in the last ten. Uh, they've just got to hit the ground running. If they're talking six points before Chelsea, we're all laughing. Yeah, I mean to use another cliche as well. We often once used to say like it's a marathon, not a sprint, and all that, but it's not anymore, is it? You've got to start sprinting and stay sprint. Sprint the marathon, sprints. Yeah, because yeah. because <laughs> yeah. it's not because it, the the bar is so high to win the league now, and and you know Man City, we know we're going to get ninety plus points basically forever. It seems. So that's that's what Liverpool have got to go into the season now and every single game you've got to go for it. Draws aren't good enough. It's got to be win, 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 relentless right from the beginning. And yeah, not it seems like a nice one to start. It's not a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's an 800 metre run. Uh, two laps as fast as humanly possible. Come and join us at the Anfield Wrap all the way through the season. We will be taking this 38 hurdle race deadly seriously. Thank you very much to Jamie, to Gareth and to Damien. Stick with us because there's a league to be won.